Hello, friends. Hello, Victory. Here we are. <laughs> it's day seven. Day seven, our living sanctuary fast unto the Lord. Praise God. We're going to go right into the devotional this morning or whenever you're jumping into the devotional. So blessed that you're with us. So blessed that you're finishing strong. Here we go. So as we come to the final and closing day of our living sanctuary fast, I want to speak to you about God's ongoing an active quest of dwelling with man. I want to thank all of those who have brought a fantastic fasting devotional throughout the week. Bren, Debbie, Cody, Shane, and Nate. Guys, thank you so very much. But I also pray that the love of God would just pour through this final fasting devotional together as we've prepared our lives to be an abiding dwelling place of His presence. The Lord Jesus is pursuing an intimate, loving relationship with each and every one of us. This is an active pursuit, and it will not end until he has accomplished his eternal purposes in our lives. From Genesis to Revelation, we can see God progressively moving closer and closer to the heart of man. We hear God walking in the, with Adam in the cool of the day in the book of Genesis. He walked with Enoch, and he talked with his beloved friend, Abraham. He communed with Moses and the prophets. All this came to an epic crescendo in how he communed with his own beloved son and then sent his spirit to us to make us his living sanctuary of his presence. In the book of Exodus, chapters 25 through 40, there's a massive portion of scripture given to the details and the plans of the sanctuary. The space devoted to the creation and details of the tabernacle in Scripture are massive. Every detail that God revealed to Moses is a revelation pointing us to Christ himself. The New Testament makes many figurative and revelatory references to the tabernacle and its furnishings. Jesus himself also gave prophetic teaching concerning his own identity revealed in the secrets of the tabernacle. The epistle of Hebrews cannot be understood without a knowledge and an understanding of the, of the book of Exodus and the book of Leviticus. The book of Hebrews is actually the greatest revelatory commentary of Leviticus. In the tabernacle, we discover God dwelling among his chosen people. Exodus 25 verse 8 and 9 says this, says, let us let them make me a sanctuary. This is God speaking. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all of its furnishings so that you shall make it. The tabernacle symbolized the dwelling place of God in the midst of his people. Exodus 25 verse 22 says, There I will meet with you. And from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherub, which is on the ark of the testimony, I will speak to you about all that I will give you in the commandments for the sons of Israel. The tabernacle was a symbol of God's dwelling place where there was a sanctuary and a special residence, a manifestation of the glorious presence of God. The tabernacle was a temporary place of worship. Hear that. It was a temporary place place of worship, a humble tent of meeting. It was used in the wilderness during Israel's wandering. Set in the, in the midst of the tribes, the people knew and understood that God had chosen to dwell among them, specifically between the cherubim, on the mercy seat of the ark. Inside the Holy of Holies, God manifested his presence in the Shekinah glory and extended his grace upon them upon the mercy seat through blood for the forgiveness of sins. The Holy of Holies found its ultimate revelation in the person of the Holy One of God, His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The glory, His glory, was seen on the Mount of Transfiguration. The apostles said, We have beheld His glory. Jesus, our High Priest, is the meeting place between a holy God and sinful man. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and no one comes to the Father but through me. John 14, 6. The Apostle Peter says, There is salvation and no one else, for there is no under no no other name, excuse me, under heaven by which is given among men by which we must be saved. Acts 4:12. There is only one true mediator between God and men, the God man, Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy 2 5. Jesus spanned the great gap between the holy and sinful humanity because he was both God and man. The scripture says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. 2 Corinthians 5.19 Colossians 2.9 says that in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Wow. The tabernacle was the way in which a sinner might approach the holiness of the one true living God. It reminded all men that sin separated us from his glory. God in the person of his son came from heaven to earth, suffering and dying the most unjust, brutal and horrific death that he might bring us to God. First Peter three, verse eight. The tabernacle was the evidence that God in his loving grace and mercy brought the redeemed people into a place of nearness to himself. We were far from his presence because of sin, but brought near through the precious blood of Jesus. Ephesians 2.13 The tabernacle moved throughout the wilderness with the children of Israel, and God was willing to come in glory, but also in humility and dwell within a tent among the pilgrim, the pilgrim tent dwellers. The tent of meeting symbolized God in the midst of his people dwelling among them, leading, guiding, providing, and protecting his beloved. Moses tells us the cloud covering of the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because of the the cloud that had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That was Exodus chapter 40, verse 34 through 35. The tabernacle in the wilderness was a copy of the original in heaven. Moses was told seven times to make a sanctuary after the heavenly pattern, which was shown to him on Mount Sinai. And then I've provided all of the scriptures there for you. There was absolutely nothing left to chance or to human ingenuity. The construction was according to the divine model that was given to Moses. Hebrews 9 says this, Therefore it was necessary that the copy of these things in heaven and the heavens should be purified with these, but these heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are a copy of the true, but into heaven itself, hallelujah, now to appear in the presence of God for us, not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. Grab hold of that. We're going somewhere, amen. In Solomon's temple, God came and dwelt in the permanent dwelling place with his people in the promised land. First Kings chapter eight says this, it says, it happened that when the priest came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. However, when the people of Israel turned to idols and false gods, the Lord brought destruction upon Solomon's temple and gave his people over to Babylonian captivity for 70 years. King Nebuchadnezzar was the only was only an instrument of judgment in the hands of Yahweh. The temple was rebuilt under Zerubbabel. That's in Ezra. You can see the scriptures there. And in reality, when reading the scriptures, we discover that God did not really dwell with Herod's temple that replaced 
Zerubbabel's. There was no Ark of the Covenant and Shekinah glory in it. Let me read that again. There was no Ark of the Covenant and there was no Shekinah glory in it. At the time when Jesus arrived on the scene, this temple had become a den of thieves and a place that grieved the Holy Spirit. After Jesus prophesied this soon coming destruction of that temple from the Mount of Olives, the Romans under General Titus in AD 70 came and leveled it, burning it to the ground, desecrating the sacred ground with killing more than one million Jewish men, women, and children on the Temple Mount. Let me now turn the page from the historic perspective and point to the person of Jesus Christ. The key understanding of the tabernacle is Jesus. It was a symbol, a picture, and a prophecy of the man and whom God would become incarnate and dwell in his people. He would be the final eternal dwelling place, Hebrews chapter 2. The book of Hebrews contrasts the pattern in heaven and the copy that was in Jerusalem. The apostle Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 8, now, this is the main point of these things that we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary. Hear that, a minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not of man. So ultimately, God came even nearer, nearer to man in the person of his very son, Jesus Christ. The apostle John describes God coming nearer in these words. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we saw his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. No one has ever seen God. For at any time, yet he has made himself known. There's the scriptures there for you in John. The apostle Paul wrote, for in him, all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. Jesus began his earthly ministry by cleansing Herod's temple. And then the religious leaders, they demanded an explanation. And Jesus answered to them and he said this, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Whew. And the Jews said, it's taken 46 years to build this temple and you will raise it up in just three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. That's John chapter two. The Lord God tabernacled himself in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile the world to himself. The earthly temple was to bring Israel into communion with God. But in Christ, we have the perfect and eternal fulfillment. The tabernacle was the place where sacrifices were made for the atonement of sin until the perfect sacrifice would come once and for all through Jesus, the Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world. The lamb was destined to shed his blood for redemption for all mankind, to all who would believe upon the Son of God. But this lamb was also destined to rise from the dead by his heavenly Father. Jesus rose victoriously so that we could, we could excuse me, so that he could send his spirit to abide with us and make us into a living sanctuary for his holy presence. The apostle Paul writes this, the mystery which was hidden from ages and from generations and now has been revealed to the saints. To them, God willed to make known what is the riches of his glory in this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Wow, Christ in us, wow. God making his habitation within the new creations. And speaking directly in the new sanctuary, Paul writes this, in whom the whole building being fitted 
together grows into a holy temple of the Lord in whom we are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. Ephesians chapter two, glory to God. You and I are the temple of the living God. From the moment you place your faith and trust in Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, he came to dwell in your spirit and in your heart. God has made his home with us. This revelation is beyond magnificent. The word dwell means to settle down and to dwell firmly in a place, to take up permanent residence. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you and if anyone defiles the temple of God God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy which temple you are hallelujah the earthly tabernacles and the temples they had their day they had their beginning and they had their ending yet the eternal temple that will not be corrupted by death is eternal 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says this. It says, A house not made by hands, but eternal in the heavens. God came down and met with his people in the Shekinah glory over the temple. But now he dwells in a new temple, a living sanctuary, spiritually constructed in the lives of regenerated believers in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the Holy Spirit dwells in each and every believer who is his temple. In closing today, the book of Revelation gives us a picture of the new heaven, the new earth, and the new Jerusalem. The apostle John writes these words out of Revelation chapter 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there is no more sea. Then I, John, saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice from heaven saying loudly, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. John goes on to write in verse 22, same chapter, But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Let me read that again. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of a sun or a moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it, and the Lamb is its light. There is coming a glorious day, I believe very soon, when the trumpet of God shall sound, and we will be gathered into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord, and our God forevermore. I say today, Maranatha. Come on, say it with me today. Maranatha. For the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, Lord Jesus. Father God, I just thank you at the conclusion of this fast, Lord, at the revelation that you have made us your living sanctuary. And that the revelation of the new, the new heavens, the new earth, Lord, the new Jerusalem, and the coming of your tabernacling amongst men shall come just as you have promised. Father, I thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation that has rested upon us today in this fast. Throughout every one of these days, I pray for my brothers, I pray for my sisters that today they finish strong that there is a finishing anointing in this fast. I pray the Spirit of God would rest heavily upon us, Lord, that we would encounter you in the secret place 
and that we are changed, God, that we go from glory to glory, strength to strength, faith to faith in the name of Jesus. Lord, carry us not only through this week, but carry us into the coming months. Come carry us throughout the entire of, of the rest of this year. I speak the blessing of the Lord over your people. And I speak your choicest blessings over victory, a church of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Guys, really love you. Be blessed.